This is WCPS One on One on the Washington County Public Schools YouTube channel. I'm Will Kaufman from the Public Information Office of Washington County Public Schools, uh, joined by Dr. Boyd Michael, who is our Deputy Superintendent, who has headed up the uh, recent calendar committee work looking at school calendars for the next two school years, uh, a somewhat unique effort this time because of the mandate from the governor. Boyd, did that present more challenges? H how did the process go in light of the mandate that we have to start after Labor Day? I guess it created more challenges in that our calendar needed to become a little bit more compressed. But another way is you add restrictions to the school calendar. Uh, it almost forces you into other decisions. So the first decision is always when we work with the counter committee, when do we start school? Well, this time we didn't talk about, you know, third week of August, right. fourth week of August, or after Labor Day. We pretty much knew that for students it was going to start after Labor Day, when after Labor Day was a brief discussion, and it turned out to be the very next day after Labor Day. But that kind of forced it into a different discussion than what we traditionally talk about. Of course, on the other end, the other part of the governor's uh, executive order was, you know, for students, things need to be finished by June 15th. So that kind of pushed us. We knew both ends of the window that we were working with. Um, so in some ways, it made it more challenging to build. Uh, and in other ways, it made more restrictions, which actually take away some decision making and you just, you know, just drops um, more automatics into the calendar. When you looked at the whole picture of the of a school year, where was the give and take more than anywhere else in the calendar? Probably uh, professional days. We traditionally have had more professional days during the middle of the calendar. Didn't really have that much flexibility, so we pushed a couple professional days more than we normally do to the beginning of the calendar. Uh, we also looked at spring break. Uh, you know, we've had spring break for a number of years and seemed to work out well for, for many of our parents and students and staff. Uh, but that's really the other place in order to kind of stay within that window of uh, after Labor Day and before June 15th, that's where the rest of the give and take came was out of our uh, extended spring break. The professional days have an extra, an extra something to them because we've, if I'm right, we've negotiated those. Those are part of the agreement with the teachers, yes? Right. So our students are mandated to go to school 180 days. Right. At least initially that's how you have to build the calendar. And our teachers are on a 190-day contract, 10 of those days being professional days, 180 days being days that they're teaching students. But a lot of the contractual things and what a lot of parents don't understand is there's a half day for grading, there's a half day for, for planning thrown in there, there's a half day for principal-led um, professional development. So there are some requirements by marking period or by semester that we have to meet our contractual requirements. Additionally, our educational support personnel, or ESP, their days that they have identified holidays, so we have to work those in the calendar. The other big restriction, um, COMAR requirements, state law requirements of when students can't be in school. It's not so much about staff, but it's about students. So by, by the time you kind of place all those in the calendar, it's really where does the end of the marking period fall? If we have a couple of days that are flexible, a couple of holidays that are undesignated, where do they go? Where do the professional days fall that don't have contractual requirements? Other than that, it's just kind of is it this week or that week for uh, a marking period to end. A lot of folks had opinions on this, the, uh, the business of starting before Labor Day and after Labor Day. Uh, and we had a relatively large group, in my opinion, as the committee looking at this, uh, did, did the, were there many and varied opinions? How did, how did a larger group work in, in the uh, scheme of things? We had 17 voting members on the committee, and then we had a couple consulting members, which were board staff that could offer information mm -hmm. about uh, you know, pay schedules and student absences and some things like that. We had a number of guests that came and participated in the, t didn't participate, but observed the two meetings. Right. Uh, we really didn't get into the debate over, you know, is it a good or bad that we start after Labor Day. We just accepted that as a given and pretty much just moved right into our work. Uh, it was a good group. It was a lot of great exchange of ideas. Uh, our students participated. Our parents participated. Our staff participated. Um, you know, we moved days back and forth a number of times mm -hmm. before we landed on decisions. And I'm very thankful for the committee we had. It was, like I say, a really a cooperative group a lot of good thought processes, um, a lot of creative ideas, and then with some of the restrictions, we kind of 
you know, had to reel ourselves back and, and think, ah, we don't really have a choice in this or that. But um, the group really worked well together and considered a lot of ideas. And we've taken on many more uh, opinions and suggestions from outside the committee, from outside the school system, too. Right. So there's been a couple newspaper articles, and we received a number of emails and suggestions. The committees got copies of all those emails as they were working their way through that process. Uh, Dr. Wilcox has certainly shared some ideas as far as flexibility of making up some snow days, and we're exploring some of those options, so that was part of our discussion. But most recently, since the calendar committee has kind of landed on their two proposed calendars, uh, we pushed out through the Public Information Office, pushed out through our Facebook page, an opportunity for people to comment. Uh, is the calendar understandable? Uh, what do you think about the calendar? Do you have any suggestions for the calendar? And when I looked this morning, we had over 600 responses to that. Overwhelmingly, people uh, can understand the calendar format, which has changed a little bit, and uh, seem to be very positive about it, very nice comments about how hard the committee worked and the, and the good things that they saw. A few questions about some things, and that will be some of the part of the discussion I'm sure we'll have with the board uh, next Tuesday. Right. I mean, ultimately, the Board of Education will sign off on the, the two calendars that have come out of the committee's work. Right. The role of the committee is strictly an advisory role. Mm -hmm. um, so they kind of work and do kind of a workshop session, really think through everything. Think of from the student and the parent and the teacher and the educational support personnel in, uh, you know, have we allowed for everything. But ultimately it is a board decision. So the board might have questions for the counter committee. They might send them back to work for some reason on something. I don't think that they will. Um, we're going to have uh, some representation from the counter committee at the board meeting, and those folks will be able to share some thoughts, um, many of which have come up in the survey. You know, why didn't you have a day here? Or why didn't you have a day there? All those are the types of things that actually, you know, haven't seen anything new in the questions or comments that haven't already been considered at the counter committee, and they chose for one reason or another to go a certain direction doesn't mean it's right or wrong some of it's just uh, you know you can move a day here or there um, and it, it might make it better for some it might make it worse for others but I think we're real close in what we're presenting to the board I think they're going to be pleased with the work but I won't be surprised that they make a few changes and there's still no definitive work by you or the committee on where exactly snow will fall and how much there will be and how our schedule will be affected by that. That's right. the one thing we haven't if, covered. Yeah. If we could uh, know when the snow days are going to be, we could work with those. That'd be <laughs> one more restriction to the calendar, but uh, it would allow us some advance notice on that. What the calendar committee did do, we kind of split a little bit. We allowed about four days on the very end of the calendar, so we still would be finished with students prior to June 15th. If it turns out that we come up with an alternative to how to make up snow days, uh, those days can be ignored. Uh, or the possibility of some combination of those makeup days and some other means of making up days via technology or uh, extended homework or uh, work from home type thing. Uh, so all that's yet to be determined. I know we're exploring that um, as well as some other counties are exploring some options like that. We have some unique opportunities now with the technology that we have. Uh, we want to make sure that it's valuable uh, instruction for children. And uh, I think all that will work itself out here as we move forward in the next couple months. All right, good. Thanks for taking the time, Boyd. Appreciate it. Sure. Dr. Boyd Michael, Deputy Superintendent for Washington County Public Schools. This is WCPS One-on-One, -on -one, found at the Washington County Public Schools YouTube channel.